Hello and welcome. I am the Scraptastic Crocheter and my name is Amanda and uh, I'm back. You might not have noticed that I was gone for very long, but you might also have noticed that I have been um, away and uh, you might al also already know that I had a lot of things to do in the last few weeks, but now that's all taken care of and now I can just come back and focus on the stuff that's fun. So I have me a cup of coffee today. I have some iced coffee, really nice. So get yourself a cup of coffee and uh, keep me company here for a little bit. Why don't you? Yeah, so I have some finished objects and I also have new works in progress. Uh, I'm going to start with this one that I have bunched up here, and it's not blocked yet, but you might see what this is. You might have already seen it before, but it is finished. So this is a Lost Souls shawl, and uh, I followed the video by Fiber Spider, and this yarn is a uh, Cotton King's Sultan shadow in the black and gray and i know that the black skulls are not very clearly visible on my very dark background here um but the fades of this yarn is really really pretty and i'm really happy about the final result so this is awesome but definitely a pattern that benefits uh, from blocking so that you can really really get a good view and like see the the skulls so i will do that at some point uh, not this week but it is in the <laughs> in the plans somewhere really fun pattern I did talk about cake making or cutting cakes a little while back. I had a couple of cakes of the blue and yellow, um, the mystery cake bag, the, the one that's called Sweden, and this is the final result. It is a baby blanket, it is a square, and you're only seeing half of it, it's folded over because of limited desk space. I'll do my best to show you what it looks like. This is a pattern called Little Prince Charming by Hooked on Sunshine, and I did, um, I didn't really do the border that was suggested to do in the pattern. I did the border I did on my um, last baby blanket, the um, also hooked on sunshine pattern. Why can't I remember? Doodad, yes. This is just a crab stitch edging. And I do really enjoy the look of it. Not as much fun to make it. But I did cut this cake, because the cakes, they are blue, yellow, and blue. And I did not want to start with blue, and I, I just wanted one, like, single fade. So I had to cut the cake into pieces, and this is the result. So I did all the yellows, and then uh, it fading over to the blue. And I do have quite a bit more blue left but I was happy with the size and to be honest this was not my favorite pattern to make um, I do love hooked on sunshine patterns but yeah I I don't see myself going back to making this one again um because there's so many other patterns that I do enjoy more that's just my personal opi opinion my preference I like the look of it. I'm not f 
the biggest fan of this yarn in the pattern. The yarn is a little bit too, you know, too much happening, too much going on in this section. So you don't really see the pattern that well, but when you do see the pattern, uh, it's really nice. And also here on the, on the edge, you see it, it's really nice. So I'm happy I did it. I'm happy with the result. Um, yeah, just not the making of it, not the most best. Yeah, it wasn't the best time I've ever had. And um, I think like the details in the center and stuff on this pattern, it would benefit on different colors so you can make it pop. And also um, there's different layers on certain sections and those would also pop more if there were color changes there. So there are ways to make this pattern more I, I, would, I wouldn't say nicer, but it would be more, like, effectful, or, you know, you'd get more out of it than what I did with this type of yarn, with just, like, here one color, and here just messy, or not messy, but, you know, there's stuff going on in the yarn, only because of the transition from yellow to blue is not that really smooth type of transition the colors are so different of course I, I think that the small pops of yellow on this part here um, it's nice but the when the blue comes into the yellow here it's not as nice uh, I did use two cakes so also another reason for wanting to like split the cakes open and uh, use them you know in a more planned way instead of having blue for a bit and then going into all these fades and then fading over to well basically starting blue fading over to the yellow and then fading back out and then repeat again with the next cake that would have been even more on this blanket so it did take a little bit of a extra sewing in ends and stuff when you do cut cakes in you know all these color transitions but that part not my favorite part either i hate sewing in ends but i'm happy with the result and i'm happy with giving this away to a little baby boy so yeah overall happy just not something i would I, I wouldn't do the pattern again just right now because I'll tell you why or I'll show you why in a little bit. So that's the finished stuff. Um, I'm going to jump in to talk about yarn for a little bit. I, this looks so sad, <laughs> I um, got two new yarn cakes. Uh, this was someone's not so loved leftovers that I... I'm going to take care of and make something pretty out of it. If you want to know what this is supposed to look like, this is a Cotton King's Sultan Deluxe. And I believe this is the old label from when it was Twirls Deluxe. So yeah, a really old, well not maybe really old, I know that they changed the names of their Sultan line from Twirls to Sultan about a year ago. Or something like that, maybe half. No, yeah, I think it was around Christmas that I got aware of it at least. So, okay, a couple of months shy of a year, most likely. But this color is Paraby, Paraby, Pariba, Pariba. I don't even know. Turb Tourmaline. Uh, and I know also that the first part of this because uh, these are the color changing yarns and it is like the four strands held together but these are twisted and the first colors in this is just pure white and the pure white part is already been used so what I'm starting off with here is a teeny tiny little bit of um, this minty green and here is more of the minty green. I'm loving this color. 
and I don't really know how this is gonna look and I have never also had the deluxe cakes to play with so this sad little creature will be given a new life in my hands I have not decided yet what it's supposed to become but I know I will really enjoy working with these teal mint bluish type of colors so I'm excited it's extra exciting to not really see you know I, I can't really look inside of it I, I can look at the website but that doesn't really show me much but it's gonna be fun to work with this and uh, when I got that one I also got my hands on this and this is a Black Friday cake not from this year uh, the Hobby Black Friday cakes has not yet, to my knowledge, uh, been released. I have seen people talking about their Christmas yarns already. Um, so that's fun, because I saw some new Christmas yarns that I have not seen before. And also some old uh, ones that I have kept my eyes on before. So uh, This yarn is just like the regular Sultan cakes. It's a cotton. It's nothing different from from the Sultan, other than limited edition Black Friday special colors. So everything else um, is the same. It's made in India. I don't know if all of them are made in India. There might be some made somewhere else, but I don't think so. Four strands held together, and this one it starts with the blue, but it it's a grayish blue almost, and then it goes into a more I would say more of a baby blue. There's a little bit more. Yeah, this is grayer and then it's more blue. And then we're transitioning into this mid-tone blue and then a darker blue. And this outer part is actually also blue, but it's more of a navy blue. So this is not going over to the blacks like the shadow cakes. Um, yeah, I'm really... Not sure what to do with it. I just got my hands on these two cakes uh, for no good reason, really, other than someone didn't want them and uh, I did want them. So, adding to my stack of yarns that I have to play with, we're now adding this blue to blue. Awesome. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do something with that in. Well, I don't know. It, I'm going to reach for this one first as soon as I figure out what to do with it. I'm sure of that because that one's more intriguing. So, I have more works in progress. Oh, first some coffee. Nice, nice. So, I am going to show you um, the ongoing shawl. And this shawl is also in one of them shadow cakes. I'm not going to tangle my yarn here too much. So it is starting here with this pinkish color. It's really deep color. It looks almost a little faded in, in the camera, but maybe not fully true to color. It's more vibrant, I would say. Um, it goes from these pinks and then it goes over to like of a, it's of a purple type color. You see it's more purple and then it will eventually fade to black. So I have this purple type color now and then it will go over to the black. Really pretty. And I have shown you this cake when I unboxed all of my cakes. So you have seen this in its full glory and now it's just a big hole. The pattern is um, a diagram that I found on Pinterest and I did not have anything other than the diagram to look at. There was no picture. So I was not sure of what to expect. Um, and it is a little bit of a 3D thing going on with these parts ruffling up here 
it's really nice it's a little like ruffled edge and it is one blocked it's really effectful with these more like solid triangles and then the mesh type pieces in between so it is really a good looking pattern I did find something different when I've been working on it because I see these triangles and nothing really more about it but when I turn it around so that I get well the center is up here so I'll look at it from up top I don't know if you can see what I see but I see an ice cream cone and ice cream scoops is that just me or is this an ice cream shawl it is ice cream scoops that's that's all I see now when I look at it I don't know what the designer of this pattern had intended upside down hanging ice cream scoops is probably not the first thing anyone would think of but it just crossed my mind when I have been you know when you work on it you flip it around and I look at it in this way when I work on it because you know I work on it this way and I see ice cream scoops and it made me happy really happy it almost makes me think that this should have been in a different color more like pastel colors because you know ice cream is usually more a little bit pastello type colors I don't really see like these dark rich colors too often maybe there is some you know chocolate is a rich color but it is not bright pink but yeah it, it's a happy surprise and um, this one is a little bit left on hold right now I have been using this as well as the oh, the two objects that I had finished the other the skull shawl and also the baby blanket I have been working on them on the go on the bus so that's you know I, I finished the skull and then I started with the other one and it got a little bit too big to be carried around you know on the bus uh, so I started this one and it's not finished yet and now it's on hold and I will be taking it with me if I go anywhere so I still have it it's nice to have it so back in the box it goes because now everyone this is my most exciting thing going on right now we have a new baby blanket on the go it's finally been set in motion it is another doodad but this time in pinks fading to grays fading to blacks like so i do have two cakes i'm jumping between them at the color transition parts so i have been pretty good at taking care of the ends i do have some ends at the moment hiding here in the back but this is not at all a lot just a couple of ends i know that i did mess up a little bit with the color transitions um, i did not really keep an eye on the changes as i thought it would because <laughs> this is a twisted yarn not like the sultans where you have like the four plies just held together and also this has six strands not four and trying to you know find all of them the colors has been a bit difficult for me so I did notice and I did already have 
and sewn in and stuff so it isn't the smoothest transition um, that it could have been because I did mess up a little bit but it did I can't really see it I know that there is a one row that is darker than the previous and it's it's so so not very noticeable but I know it's there so I'm gonna leave it as a bit of it's handmade there's got to be mistakes somewhere other than that so far not no other mistakes so that's just I'm gonna leave it at that it just it, it makes it look like it's a little bit of a deeper shadow maybe in some parts and I think like I can't really see it when I look at it I can't really see it maybe you can see that there is some parts that is probably a little bit darker than the previous instead of but I'm not really sure that it's visible like it's barely noticeable that we're going from a dark pink to a lighter pink and then into this lighter pink and then over to the grays so I'm, I'm fine with it I'm just gonna leave it at that because I know I've read somewhere that I think it's from Irish crochet type of folklore or something that you leave a piece of your soul in a crocheted item and leaving a mistake will be make it easier for you to let go of the item and keep more of your soul intact something along those lines and it does make it maybe easier to part with an item if you know that it's not perfect and you're not gonna be too hung up on the perfection of something you made that you don't yeah I don't know there, there's so many ways to look at that but I do agree in, in some ways that you do put a lot of effort into most of the things that you do when you crochet or do anything else that you like and that does probably leave a part of your soul in in what you do then it's you know probably a good thing to leave mistakes if it is true that it's easier to let go or to keep your soul more intact to keep more of your soul together and not letting it slip away in the items you make I guess more pieces of the soul to be divided into more pieces of crochet if you look at it in that way probably very philosophical and such and I'm not sure I'm the best person to talk about stuff like that it's not really my you know my favorite thing to talk about I love to talk about crochet I love to talk about yarn and that's probably what I do best so I'm gonna stick to it as most yeah as much as I can so I did this pattern previously in a Sultan Pestello grape and you might have seen that one uh, it was uh, an item that was um, ordered so it was already finished and delivered and all that and this is going to be a present for my niece that yeah it's going to be fun to make it and I hope that uh, her parents are going to be happy about it too. It's going to be interesting to see that, but yeah. It's always fun to make stuff for people that you care about. Uh, family, friends, or you know. Um, it makes it a little bit of a special thing when you have a person in mind that you're making something for. And then you're putting maybe a little bit extra effort into it. I did change some stuff up on this pattern not some uh, I have been taught that popcorns 
are done with five double crochets and then you take the hook out and then you put the hook in the first one and then you pull through <laughs> that's how i learned a popcorn this designer uh, hooked on sunshine she likes to make her popcorns with four double crochets instead of five and i did follow the pattern with the four um when making these on the previous one and now i took the liberty to do my regular style of popcorns with five double crochets just because that's i don't know I like that type of popcorn. It does pop a bit more. I feel like the 3D effect is greater with a little bit more oomph to it. Like when you squish them down, they don't pop up as or like they don't get deflated in the same way. It doesn't really matter probably with the difference in four versus five double crochets, but I like it. So that's what I'm sticking to. It was just my personal design choice. Other than that, I have done nothing different from the pattern. And yeah, I'm working my way with my yarns. And I did feel that this yarn feels thinner than the Sultan Shadows or Sultan's whatnot. And therefore, I normally been using the three and a half millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a three millimeter crochet hook on this just to get like better stitch definition. I really love a lacy type of flowy baby blanket, but I also don't want it to be too flimsy and the pattern like disappearing if you don't have stitches neat enough or tight enough. So this is the sheepies world and i do feel like three millimeter is good enough for this i know i have a pretty loose grip i'm a loose hooker for those who like that type of term but i i know that that's how i do stuff i know i have a looser grip and that like thinking dk weight i would probably go for a three and a half millimeter crochet hook as well um, if that gives anyone else a type of reference to how I do stuff or you know why things might be looking different for me compared to if you would do something similar could be a good side note you know so I think it's called for a little bit of coffee Feeling a bit drying my throat. I'm talking too much. Am I not? <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to continue this. I will keep you posted. I know that I've been terrible at actually sitting down to film stuff. But as you've seen, I have made really a lot of different progress in other areas. You know, I. I've crocheted a lot instead and um, I'm thinking that if I do well a little bit more time between my videos and get more items made or you know more to share then maybe a longer video is more okay to look at or would you rather have like multiple shorter videos I don't know let me know what you think but I am so happy to just dive back into this one. So I'm going to stop ramble for now. And I'm going to thank you very, very much for being here. And I've noticed that there's been a little bit of an up and down in my subscriber um, count. Some days it just pops up a lot of new subscribers from nowhere. And some days are slower. But there's been quite a big jump recently so I really want to thank you for subscribing all of you new subscribers and if you have not yet subscribed then please do if you feel like you like my content you want to see more of it leave a like or just a comment of anything or anything anything you saw 
in this little video that I've just showed you? Or is there anything you want to see from me? Or, you know, anything really. Um, just leave a comment. So thank you, thank you very much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. And I hope to see you back here again soon. So for now, thank you. And bye-bye.